congratulations on the film. I just got to watch it and, and really enjoyed it. Thank you. So I want to let's jump in. Um, it's a really interesting premise of you and Kate Bosworth's character um, stuck in this room for 50 days. Um, talk a little bit about how the room is revealing the character of your character, Mikey. Well, at first, Mikey starts out as very happy-go-lucky kind of guy, a very kind of juvenile guy in a lot of ways. And the room sort of breaks him. So he's prone to boredom, and so the room is boring. He's prone to having a bad trip if he takes drugs, and the room provides them with the certain kinds of drugs. So it, it's, it's, it, the room kind of systematically breaks down what his weaknesses are. Yeah, and it one of the things that, you know, I don't want to reveal too much, but there there is a little bit about the his relationship with his brother. And that's a, a really emotional moment for for your character in the film. Yeah. And the the room makes him confront these demons that are from his past that he hasn't fully processed and they they're threatened to kind of ruin him in a way. Yeah, yeah. So your performance with with Kate, I thought, was really um, amazing, and how you guys connected with you know this really sort of austere uh, set around you that made you really focus on the performances. Um, talk a little bit about your experience about shooting with Kate and what that was like. Um, you know, kind of getting these really emotional moments. Well. Um... Kate and I had worked together on this film called Force of Nature that we shot in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, two years before or maybe a year before. And we got along just fantastic. And we had, we always had a great rapport. We really liked each other. So when this came around, we really responded to the idea of doing another film together. And the film, um, you know, it there's a huge range of emotions, including, you know, tragic sad ones and for both of our characters and as far as playing scenes like that you know you're you're kind of just you're kind of just riding the wave you know I, that's the way that I played this part was just riding my instincts as much as I could you know I like turned my brain off in a weird way and just rode just rode my instincts the whole time yeah, how do you think you, I was wondering about that. How would you, how would you, did you relate to this character and, and how would you have dealt in a room like this for <laughs> that amount of time? I mean, in a way I related to the character. I don't think I'm probably very similar to him though. Um, I don't know how I would have reacted to being in a room. You know, I have a son in real life who's almost nine years old. So I don't think I would like not being able to call my son. So I, that would be very hard. Um, but would it be fun to be locked in a room for 50 days? I don't know. I mean, if I had Kate and Ashley in bed with me every night, maybe. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of guys watching the movie are probably like, uh, and I get $5 million on top of that? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> not too bad. Not too shabby. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's starting to sound better and better. <laughs> And yeah, so it kind of brings up an interesting point because, you mean, I think the, the film toys a lot with this idea of whether money can buy you happiness or not. And I think Mikey definitely has a very different take on it than Kate's character. Yeah. And so, you know, Mikey, in his mind, it's like you can't buy happiness and, and they need to forfeit the money and all this kind of stuff and they need to surrender it. And the film presents that idea. But what's smart about the script is that it doesn't say that's the right answer because it still gives Kate the perspective when she tells him, you were raised with money. You've always had it. You don't know what it's like not to have it. And that's a very valid perspective for Kate to have as a critique of Mikey's opinion on this. That actually is very reasoned. Mikey doesn't have a real perspective on money because he has always had it. So the film argues that 
some things money can't buy, right? But it also doesn't say, and that's the right answer, and there's no other perspectives. It wisely includes um, another perspective. Yeah. So how does this film fit into, um, you know, what you look, what, what sort of thing, roles are you looking for? And how did this film sort of address that about the, the type of things that you look for when you pick a role? Well, this film was game centered. So it's like the game. I love games. I love like thrillers and games. Squid Game. I love Squid Game. Immaculate Room, kind of similar in a sense where there's these games with these rules from these outside, maybe malevolent forces. I just love games. I just find them very, very entertaining, especially in films. And so it started with that, with a film that I knew the game aspect of it would hook my attention as a viewer. Um, and then on top of that, the role, the way it was written and the kind of the journey of the character for me was, had some merit, you know, had some, had some heft to it. Uh, even though the character is very light in a lot of ways, there's these dark, deep sides to him that he kind of hides that eventually come out whether he likes it or not and he can't really hide from some of these things and these tragedies in his past any longer. Mm -hmm.